Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans. What's going on? It's Trip Young with another Quarantine TV edition of Real Fans Real Talk. We still locked out of the TV station, but the show must go on. And uh, I'm actually excited today because we're we bringing back an alumni Real Fans Real Talk guest right here. Uh, you probably seen him on a couple different channels uh, within the last couple of months, as I have myself. And I'm very happy to welcome back Deval Ellis, fresh off of the season three premiere of Sisters on BET. What's going on, my brother? What's good, Trip? How's everything? Everything is good, man. I can't complain. So t talk to me, man. First of all, like I said, again, congratulations, because when you came on the show the last time, you had just finished uh, doing the Piece of Me movie, and I know you had yeah, a couple of yeah, with a couple of smaller smaller roles that you had did. First of all, like I said again, congratulations because when you came on the show the last time, you had just finished uh, doing the Piece of Me movie with a couple of smaller smaller roles that you did. But now I feel like I didn't see you in like three different series. Um, yeah, I caught you on C when I saw you on CBS. With uh, Queen Latifah, <laughs> I said, "Hold on, if Brooklyn, we here." <laughs> That's yeah, it. yeah, CBS that was is um, big time. that was a that was a big deal for me. Um, you know, I did um <clears throat> Sisters. I'm currently doing Sisters right now on BET. Um, Bigger, which is Will Packer show on BET Plus. Um, and I was on Queen Latifah's show playing preacher uh, for the, the the series premiere. Um, it was exciting because Queen Latifah is like one of one of my idols. You know, um, I don't look up to a lot of people other than my pops. Like I've just my father's my hero. So I don't really like calling people idols. But when I look at what Queen Latifah was able to do in this industry from the 90s and, and her diverse uh, diversity and, and being able to sing and rap and then also produce and act, be a comedic actor, do movies, you know, and, and do sitcoms. It's like, yo, there's nothing she she can't do. So when I saw that opportunity, I was I was excited. And she she hit up a little bit. In that, yeah, she in that flipped episode. me over a table. <laughs> mm, hurt my back. Right, listen, she we might have to cut the check on that one. Come on, man, you can't be injuring cats. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? And I had to let people know, man, I do my own stunts too. So you know, I, my back still hurt from doing that with Queen. That's a fact. <laughs> if they if they remember from the, from the last time you were on the show, you did have that NFL experience. You played sports, yes. so you know what I'm saying. You can cover your your own stunts. That's what's up, though, man. Yes, yeah, it's, it's funny. We did talk about that the last time I was on the show. I played in the NFL for a year. So uh, in between a piece of me and me doing Sisters, I was also Amari Hardwick's uh, stunt double on Power for, for three seasons. Mm. So that's really how I learned all the stunt stuff. And I, I only did that so that I could learn, learn the inner workings of acting. I wanted to see a, le a lead actor actually work up front. And it was like a paid internship. But they had asked me, they said, you ever did stunts, Deval? I was like, listen, I played in the NFL for four years. They don't get much more stunts than that. So I can take a hit if that's what you mean. No, that's what's up. And I mean, the character of Ghost is such a great character to study under. Um, uh -huh. You know what I mean? And you got you got years out of that. And look at how impactful power was and so many spinoffs coming from it. So I, I know just being around that environment had to be be crazy. Yeah, it was it was an easy decision for me. I mean, outside of The Wire, I believe power is probably one of the top rated uh, television shows in that genre. Um, I know Snowfall is slowly creeping on them as one of the greats and is iconic for our time. But to have an opportunity to see, you know, how it works, how a black male lead works in that environment and a show that's so iconic was definitely the, the best opportunity for me. It was better than any school and I could go to even though I did study you know some people think that you just go straight from football into TV I did study I did two-year conservatory at the Esper school and I have my degree in speech communications and performance so I've always been a student of the game but uh, learning from Omari was great we got us we got to talk about sisters man because okay. I've been watching this show since the first episode <laughs> and I think if you remember as soon as I saw you pop up on the show I posted it on the gram like yo yeah that's what's yeah. up man so talk to me about that and how that whole experience came about um, it's it's funny because I was actually that April I had auditioned for Bigger on uh, BET Plus, which is Will Packer show, and I was come down to me and another dude by the name of Chase to play the role of Dion. And um, Robbie Reed called me in the office and let me know. They flew me out. I was doing a producer session, and I thought I got the role. And 
they says, hey, device, I want to let you know we're going to go with Chase. Mm. Right. And I was like, so then y'all brought me in the office to let me know in person that I, I didn't get the role. And she was just like, no, I really wanted you to know that, you know, you're doing the right thing. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. Just because you didn't get this role doesn't mean that you're not a good actor. It's just this role wasn't for you. So I was heartbroken. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, this is my opportunity to be a series regular on a TV show. Uh, fast forward three weeks, I get a phone call to audition for Sisters. No, I got I get a phone call to audition for The Oval. Okay. And I go in and I, I send an audition for The Oval. Um, I have a producer session once again with TPS, and then I read for the role of Pinky. And uh, Pinky was supposed to be in, I think, four episodes. Uh, he wasn't a series regular. He was a recurring role, but they booked me for the role of Pinky. And I was excited for it. came back home. I told wifey, I said, yo, I got it. You know, this is going to be my opportunity to get on TV. And then... Uh, a week later, I get a phone call from Mark Swinton today, hey, Deval. Uh, that's how Mark Swinton talks. He goes, "Hey, uh, Deval, uh, I got some news for you. We're gonna have to pull the role of uh, Pinky for from you." And I was like, "Damn, I got fired on my day off. Like, what is happening? I, I didn't even get a chance to go to work yet. Yeah. Like, what is really happening in my life? That's two roles that I had." So he started laughing. He was like, "No, actually, we have a better role for you. Uh, it's a role by the by the name of Zach on the show Sisters." And uh, we haven't announced it yet. There's a show is going to be on BET as well as Linear. You're going to be a series regular. Uh, you're going to be one of the male leads. And I was like, yo, is this like really happening? Like I went from being a recurring role to a series regular. And um, that's that's how the story actually happened. I had auditioned for a completely different TV show. They pulled that from me and gave me this. Then two weeks later, I get a phone call from Bigger. And they say, yep. hey, uh, we have a role for you on Bigger. It's a guest star playing Ken. So I ended up booking a role on both TV shows. Yes. And it's funny because when you don't get something, you automatically assume like, dang, I, you know, I wasn't good enough. Or no one's looking out for me. And then all I did was keep pushing. And me and Chase became really good friends because after he booked the role of Dion on Big Eye, I, I called him. I was like, yo, congratulations. And he was like, yo, people typically don't congratulate you when you beat them out for a role. It's very competitive in that Hollywood space. But I'm like, yo, it, one of us had to get it. And yeah. you were the guy that got it. And I watched his audition and he was actually really good. So I was like, yo, congratulations. We kept in touch. And then I think that positive energy, that karma ended with me, you know, getting a role on Sisters. And then they brought me back for season two of Bigger to Recur. Mm -hmm. So I got six out of 10 episodes on that. So God's been blessing me. So I've just been thankful and excited. Absolutely. Because I, I was going to say, you still wound up getting on Bigger because you had the... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They and brought me back season two for six episodes. So it was a blessing. Ty, you know, Tyler Perry is he's really killing it right now. I feel like every show on BT uh right now, like he's really doing his thing. So how 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 does that work? Because I'm sure it, they you know, they watch the auditions from show to show because all of these things are, are you know somewhat connected because even um I um the the the, the lead on, on, on sisters was also on the episode of Bruh. Um, as, yeah. a, as a lawyer, so the shows are kind of like connected, so they get a chance to actually see you anyway. Well, what happens is, is Tyler, Tyler is involved in all of, he has his hands in all of these things. So they have a casting crew, and this is what's crazy about working at Tyler, Tyler Perry. He, he doesn't just have a show. The man owns a 350 acre studio, you know, and it's the largest studio. It's larger than all of the major studios combined, Paramount, Warner Brothers, um, it's, it's, it's a huge studio. And inside the studio, they have a full production office and the casting office cast people and they they have a bunch of projects they're doing at one time. And when the way Tyler writes, he likes to keep his artists working, yeah. you know. So, for example, if when we film, we film quick, we film 25 episodes, season one in 10 days, mm. which is unheard of. Like no one does that in TV. Typically, if you're going to do 10 episodes, it'll take you 10 weeks. That's typically how it works. But we did 25 episodes in 10 days. So it gives us an opportunity as the artist to make money and continue to do other projects. But Tyler works with people that he trusts because that pace is very, very quick. It's, it's faster than any pace on television. It's faster than soap operas. So he likes to work with the people that he knows can come in and perform on a day and, and get things done. So if he sees you in one show and he wants to do another show and you've worked well with him, he's going to put you in that show. And that's just the way the way it works there because he's the executive producer, showrunner, writer, director. He gets to do it all. So yeah, and he's been doing that since the, since the plays because I remember yeah, uh, Cora and Mr. Brown being in, in almost every Tom yeah. Perry, all of the Medea yeah. plays, and then now he doesn't he doesn't transition. Um, I you know one thing I, I I love about Tyler Perry is that he's giving 
a lot of our people opportunities that yes. normally they don't get. So every time I see yes. another show come on on BET, I'm just like, yes. Like, I don't care what yes. it is. I'm supporting. I'm going to watch because I like seeing people that look like me on TV when I turn on, on the screen. No, absolutely. Um, the representation matters. And um, it's it's important that we get an opportunity to see ourselves in a different light. Uh, part of the reason why I started social media uh, five years ago, I think it was five years, was because I had already done network television a couple of times. I did The Blacklist. I did Mysteries of Laura. Um, I did Power. Um, I did, I think I did Blue Bloods and another show. And all of the shows, I either played an ex-con, a convict, or an inmate. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was on Power for season two, my son was watching it with me. Of course, he wasn't watching the show, but he wanted to see his dad. And it got to the point where I was in jail. And he goes, dang, dad, you always have on that orange jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, I was like, you know, I'm perpetuating the same stereotype that I hate seeing just to have a job. And I, it, it struck me like I was like, you know, dang, like that hurt. But I was like, what else am I supposed to do? You know, I um, I can only go out for the You can only take what's been offered to you. Yeah, I can only take what's being offered to me. And and two days later, I went out for another role on Blue Bloods, and I get there, and it was for inmate. And when I get there, there's three auditions. They're doing inmate, well, four auditions: inmate number one, inmate number two, a doctor role, and an attorney. Okay. All of the inmate roles were black and Latino men. All of the doctor and lawyer roles were Asian and white men. And I left. I walked out of the audition. And my wife said, what happened? I was fast. It must have went well. I said, I can't do it. I just, I can't, I can't do it anymore. She said, what do you mean? I was like, the only way I get to be on television is if I play an inmate or a convict or an ex-con. Yeah. And she was just like, well, what's your plan? I said, I'm going to utilize social media to show a different version of blackness. Like, I, I got 15 seconds. I'm going to create a social sitcom. I started it with my family. And, um representation really matters because now when you look at a show like Tyler Perry, you have four black female leads. One is an attorney. Yes. One is a, an entrepreneur. She's a hairdresser. One works at the airport and one works at a bank. You know, these are four black women that have four different jobs that we all do on a daily basis, but they don't yeah. see us like that. So it's important for, for them to see those opportunities. That's a fact. So, all right. So now, Let's get into into the character of Zach. Cause Zach, uh -huh. he seems to get into a lot of trouble uh, yes. on this show. But I, I I support Zach because I see you know he's a brother trying to get his his life together. Yes, but, you know he got certain vices that keep drawing him in different directions. Yes, and as soon as I, I feel like you was about to get it together, you backslid, man. What, what's going <laughs> so, on? This is this is actually what's funny. Um, I just talked about doing a role where I have to play an ex-con, right? Um, when I was on Queen Latifah's show, I played what? An ex-con, right? Yeah. But um, when you when you choose to take roles, you take roles that tell stories. Um, in that show, I had an opportunity to tell a story about an ex-con who had to take the time because if he would have done something, if he would have tried to fight it, he would have gone to jail for something worse, yeah. which is a story that people don't realize, right? Um, when I was on NCIS, I played an ex-con a young man dealing with recidivism. And what people don't know is that recidivism is the propensity for young black men or young brown men to go in and out of jail because they've already been convicted of a crime and they're just re repeat offenders, they return. Mm -hmm. So Zach, same thing, he's dealing with recidivism. Uh, he gets out of prison and he's trying to get his life together. And the reason why I was excited was because I, I got an opportunity. I, I have an opportunity to show what these young men go through. Zach is a really, really good guy. Um, if you watch from season one to season two, you realize that Zach is really good with numbers. So it's like Zach is not someone who's afraid of hard work. He's not someone who's who's dumb and just does dumb things. Zach is a really smart individual. He was just never given an opportunity to put his talents to work. And you get to watch from season one, season two, and, and keep watching for season three. Zach is transitioning and ascending. And people will get an opportunity to see an ex-con do something great in the yes. world. And along the way, he has relationships with women. Um, another reason why I like taking on the role of Zach was because we get to learn about what men go through when they're making decisions about the women they date. You know, the relationship with him and Karen is very tumultuous. You know, it's toxic because she wants a man who is ready to be everything she wants and needs right now. And Zach wasn't ready to be that, but Zach loved her, but Zach didn't know how to be that. And his insecurities and her insecurities was really toxic for the two of them. And they always bumped heads. Then he meets Fatima, who's encouraging yes. and, and shows him and says to him, hey, 
you can do whatever you want to do. She affirms him. And you watch Zach start to change and his trajectory change because he's getting words of affirmation from a woman. And I love taking on a role because we get to go on this journey with Zach and say, you know what? I remember when Zach started and he was the goofy guy that worked at the airport. Mm -hmm. And now you get to see him starting his own business. He started working with the construction company, flipping houses. And it's like, wow, this this is yeah. real life. This is what happened. So I'm excited about it. You know, and you're absolutely right because it, it definitely shows that transition and how you can transition from being in a bad place in your life and mm -hmm. being in prison to coming and now turning your life around and making absolutely. it into something positive. I will say this, though. I did laugh. You kind of styled on her when you walked out after you gave her that $5,000. Of course. I, of course. Of course. Because for the past three years, yes. I've, been, I've been saying to her, I've been trying, I've been trying. And Women go through something very different than we go through. If, I don't know if people remember uh, episode one. Karen is coming out of the clinic and the doctor saying, hey, if you want to have children, you need to start doing it ASAP. Like you're at the point you're in your mid 30s. You, you know, them eggs, they're not going to always be there forever. So her her sense of urgency is way different than Zach's because yeah. she's trying to do something with her life, with a, which a lot of men don't understand. Women are playing a different game than we're playing because their life is different. And for Zach, he's like, man, why couldn't you just be patient? I'm working, I'm working. And Karen's like, I can't just sit here and wait for you. So, and, and part of that became toxic when Karen was telling him, you ain't shit, you can't do shit, kicking him out of the house, uh, dating another guy while, Karen, while Zach was trying to be with her. So finally, Zach has got his, his stuff together. And he's yeah. like, you know what? I'm out. I'm going to pay you your money back like I told you I would, but I'm out. Go find the guy that was ready, the rich guy with the money in the houses. Mm -hmm. Go be that with him and leave me the hell alone. <laughs> yeah. Now I was hoping too, because when they went back, I was I was thrown off. I said that that better not be Zach coming back now after he just <laughs> said that like that. But then it wound up being, being the other guy. I was like, all right, good, good, because he need to stay nah. with stay with Fatima. I, I I loved I love the the difference in in the woman in Zach's life and how mm -hmm. different Zach has been able to become because he's not being constantly beat down. He's actually being uh -huh. built up now. So when you mm -hmm. see that, it's like, damn, I wish, you know, cause the, I think that the, the, the people like Zach and Karen together, but it is just, it's just so bad. And especially if, you know, from the male perspective, you want to be with a woman that's going to build you up and not tear you down. Absolutely. And Absolutely. cause you can see Zach is trying, but it's just, sometimes it's hard to get your act together. And well, I mean, let, let's be honest. Our, our first representation of people that we see are our parents. Mm -hmm. And one thing y'all didn't get a chance to see, excuse me, was um, Zach's relationship with his mom. Zach has a poor relationship with his mom. And in a lot of ways, you tend to date your mom, right? And his mom was the type of woman who told his father, you ain't shit, get out of here, you ain't gonna be shit. Then told Zach, you ain't shit, just like your father. So when he, he dates women, and he ends up being with a woman that's exactly like his mom, it's triggering. Now you're yeah. looking at this woman and she's telling you the same thing your mom's telling you. So the only thing you can do is try to hurt her because hurt people hurt people. So what does Zach do? He goes out and cheats. He goes out to get his ego stroke because yes. that's the only way he can feel better like a man. And for Karen, her, mom, her dad wasn't around. Mm -hmm. So she has abandonment issues. And every time Zach leaves, she is a reminder of her father leaving. So she does the same thing. Hurt people hurt people. She'll call another guy or she'll do something else. So um, it's it's interesting to watch these two characters grow apart as yeah. you learn so much about them. And it's a fun character to play. Now, you, you, you mentioned how you kind of took to social media um, a little bit early on. One thing I, I you know that I've noticed uh, in passing on Instagram, when you just see random posts and stuff, I see a lot of... Hashtag couples goals, hashtag family goals right. with right. you and your family because you guys right. have kind of become right. so interactive with the world right. and the relationship that you have with not only with your wife but with your mm -hmm. with your sons and showing that positive male and positive woman mm -hmm. in the children's life and it's it's something that's been captivated and people are just drawn to it. Mm, I um first of all I I humbly accept the compliments whenever someone says couple goals really i humbly accept the compliments but i, I hate it to be honest i, I hate pressure? it because um no not even the pressure i'm gonna be me i'm, I'm gonna be me my wife we're, we're gonna be us I, there's no pressure like i don't ever feel like some people say oh you know you may not want to be couple goals because you don't want to fall off there's no falling off i make a choice every day to be here to be a husband to be a father so i'm not concerned with that i just um I, like i said before i don't have idols 
you know, I, my father was is my role model. My father is my favorite person. So for me, for other people to look at us and say, I want to be like them, you could never be us because we are still trying to be us. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out the best versions, the, the best way to be the best version of ourselves every single day. And what I fear is fear. People may see our highlights because that's really what it is. When you watch social media, you see less than one percent of my day. Yeah. But you see the highlights because it's entertainment and we like to entertain people. And I don't want people to feel like if every day of their life isn't like ours, that they're failing. You know, like um, I had a couple dudes that are getting married, a couple young dudes hit me up on Instagram and say, hey, bro, you know, um, how do you how did you get to the point where you and your wife agreed on everything? And I said, we don't agree on everything. And, it, and it's unfair for you to believe that y'all have to agree on everything to enjoy life the way we do. We argue all the time. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I don't mind showing that we started our podcast, that ass podcast. Uh, shout out to dead ass shout out to new york because uh we want to give people the truth you know the devout you see on social media with his wife and his kids is me but it's only a small snippet of who i really am and you guys get to see the highlights so you may say that part is couple goals but if you knew the entirety of what kadina and i had to do to work through to get to that point you'd be like hmm i don't know if i want to go through that and that's fine yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fun. That's our testimony. I, I will never run from that. But um, that's why I hate the couple goals thing, because I just want people to see us in our entirety and not just the Instagram version, not just the pictures with the matching Tim's. Yeah. You know, the videos with the music like that's that's not really us. That's, that's the entertainment part. Of and it. that's one of the things that gets lost with social media is that for the most part, people show their wins. And they're not, Absolutely. they're not showing the losses. They're not showing the bad times. You know, when things are all rough and you may have to, you guys may have a, a disagreement or something, you know, not even you, but just in general, like people don't see No, but, but even us, yeah. even us, Trip, like, like I, I'd say I've never lost anything in life. I've only had lessons, mm, okay. you know? So when Kadena and I have an argument, when uh, Kadena and I have lost money, um, we, we've talked about our infidelities. We've talked about everything. We've been together since we were 18. Those were all lessons for me. I don't shy away from any flaw that someone else may point out as a flaw for DeVal. To me, that's not a flaw. That's just my testimony. That's something I had to learn about myself. That's something I had to learn about my wife. And we building on that. So, so but but the truth is, and in, in especially in America, they, they love to build people up and they love to tear them down. Yes. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't sit up on a pedestal and say, I'm perfect yeah. or try to portray this idea of perfection then because they're going to wait. Down. Oh yeah. They're going to wait for you to slip up and do something to say something and say, aha, and you're gonna be I the knew meme. it's going to be a new meme out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the truth of the matter is that that's okay too, because people don't have to agree with everything you do in your life. That's why we have testimonies. It's just, it's me. I'm living truthfully. And my wife is as well. So I enjoy it. I enjoy social media. Um, the it, representation matters. Does it get complicated for you guys have any kids because you you guys are both working actors and you're both on shows right now. Um, it's it's not kind of well. Kaneen's actually not on the show right now. She was actually she was on an episode of Bruh okay. and she did a um she did two episodes of Bigger. Shout out to my baby. But she's getting back getting back into it. You know she had to take a pause because she had children. Okay. But um, it doesn't get difficult because we lean on our village. You know her mom lives with us so that when I got to leave and travel, okay, you know, someone's here with the kids. If Kadeen got to go do something now, we, we do the podcast year round. So we're always working. And um, it doesn't get difficult because we trust the people around us. My parents, her parents, my brother and sister, her brother and sister. And uh, we try to keep the children as normal as possible because they've grown up in the public eye on social media. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we're trying to kind of pull them back a little bit, especially as they go through adolescence, because I want my, my children to understand who they are first and not see themselves through the lens of what other people see them as. And that's difficult to do when when they're on social media, you know, because they're my, my children are like any kids. They go on social media to see what people are saying about about the videos and stuff. And they, oh, they thought this was funny. They thought that was funny. But sometimes people don't have the nicest things to say, yeah. even about your children. And I try to I try to shield them from that because I don't want them to become addicted to getting that adrenaline rush of seeing what people say about them, you know. So yeah. it's not difficult. We send them to school like everybody else. We do basketball practice, football practice. Like y'all do y'all thing. Don't worry about this side. Do have or have they shown 
an interest in acting? Well, Jackson, uh, when Jackson was four, he came to me, he said, Dad, I want to I want to act. I want to be he had watched Home Alone, loved it, said, you know, I want to be the black Kevin. Um, and I was like, all right, dude, whatever. So he's like, I want to do commercials like you. At the time, I was only doing commercials. Dude goes out on his first audition, books a Cheerios commercial. Excited about it. We do the Cheerios commercial, me and him for Father's Day. Okay. Goes on the second audition, books an, another role. I mean, books another commercial. After that, he said, I'm retired. I don't want to do this no more. He's, he's like, I'm going to retire on top he like had Jordan. Fun. He had his fun. Um, he had started getting into sports. And the auditions were, you know, we were going to the city and he was like, man, I'm, I don't want to go to the city on a random day after school and get dressed. He said, I'm done. So I'm not pushing them into it. Cairo now loves the camera. So um, it's a different game we're playing. I'm all about having autonomy over your time. So rather than running the auditions, I'll have Cairo do videos and he'll get his own brand partnerships for doing his videos. Okay. So now he gets paid. Um, I'm always thinking ahead. I have an LLC. All my children are employees on my LLC. Uh, so they all take a salary. They all get a 401k. So I'm, you know, I'm making sure that my kids are taken care of so that they have their own college, you know, their own college saving plans by the time that they get out of here. So it's also a way to, uh, get them taxes taken care of, you know, (laughs) listen, absolutely. And and that's something that our viewers need to need to hear, need to see uh, more of, because why not? You know, if you, if you have your family, why not make it a family thing? Um, you know, you got you, you have your business and everything is official, so why not bring the family in? Like that's that's how you you grow into to getting generational wealth. So, you know, absolutely. I mean, and I, I don't mind giving the I'll give the, the viewers a tip because I had a, I had a, a, a older gentleman ask me this yesterday. He has a, a nine year old daughter. And he was like, she wants to get on the TV, you know, um, but he, he had started building his social media platform. And I said, why don't you just um, get brand partnerships on your social media platform and pay your daughter that way? And he was like, I just want, you know, I kind of want to get her out there. And I explained to him, I said, think about it like this. What, what's the reason why you want to do TV so you can make money? Right. That's ultimately what it is. She's nine. OK, she's nine. You could get an LLC, get brand partnerships, pay your daughter a salary. But take that money, put the money that you get from whatever brand partner she, she get, you can put that in a 501 c I'm not 501C, you can put that in a 529 plan, you can put that in the IRA, which is tax-free money. Once you put that money away first, that's before it's taxed, and that money can accrue interest over the next nine years before your daughter goes to college. Yes. And he was like, I never thought about it like that. I said, yeah, that's the only reason why you, know, you want to do TV is so that she can make money. Why not make the most money? Yeah. You know, why why put your daughter in an opportunity where she may have to wear or say or do something that someone else wants her to do that she may not want to do? Yeah. Protect her while she's this age. Then when she's 18, she's an adult. She wants to get in front of the camera. That's a choice she can make. But um, as far as as far as putting my kids in front of the camera, they're going to tell me when they're ready. Yeah. And even when they're ready, I'm going to protect them. So I'm, I'm not with the pushing them to do anything. Do do you get a lot of people? Um, like in your DMs or emails asking like for advice and just help with different things? Absolutely. And and, I, and I'm open to share. I answer as many as I can. Now, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I got 1.5 million followers on Instagram. I get thousands of emails a day. So if I don't see an email or a DM, it's not because I'm trying to curve somebody. I probably just didn't see it. Yeah. And I'm also a father and a husband. So I don't sit it on my phone all the all time. Day, yeah, so the sometimes place. people say, I sent you a DM weeks ago. You never answered. I apologize. I probably never saw it. But when I do get a chance to go through them, I think it's important for me to pay it forward. Mm-hmm. The only reason why I got here is because someone sat down and shared knowledge with me. Now that I have this knowledge, I have a fiduciary responsibility in my community to give that knowledge to other people, because that's the only way we can build as a nation. You know, no one is really going to give 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 us the information. You know, no one's going to pull someone else and say, hey, you know, no, we got to do it for ourselves. So I make it a point to do that. Um, I try to do the clubhouse thing. But um, I just it just it was too much. Like yeah, I, it's just I too much social it. media at this point. TikTok. It was like right after the right after the, the quarantine. It was TikTok, Clubhouse, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. I was like, nope, I can't, I can't. If so I couldn't connect to three, I wouldn't answer. even do them all. Because no, I, I can't go up. Mm-mm. I people ask me now, why are you not on TikTok? I said it was just getting to be too much. My mental health is important. I don't want to <laughs> yes. do no dance videos. All right, I'm just tired. I'm old. I, it, TikTok is for young people. It's it is for young people. No, it is. It definitely it, is. It's too much dancing. I was going like, on. 
it's too much. I can't, I can't do it. My back was hurting trying to do all this dance. I was on there trying to, I didn't, I didn't get it. I was like, man, Jackson, y'all, y'all do that. <laughs> so it's all good. You, you're doing a lot of other things out here. Um, uh, meet the blacks too. Oh no, no, that doesn't, oh, you, I don't know how my oh, name got attached to meet the blacks, but it was okay. on the IMDB and people hit me up. It's like, yo, you're going to be in meet the blacks. And I was like, no, what is Meet the Blacks? So someone mixed up my name. I don't know if it was Lil Duval and they put Deval Ellis, but oh, now that's wow. not me and Meet the Blacks. You're <laughs> okay. not the first person to make that mistake. All right, because I'm like, because all right, so we so we good. Then. No, We're, listen, before we get out of here, because I know and, and I wanted to to uh, commend you again because one of the things I know we have been chopping up. I appreciate you coming back through, but you was you, you gave me the time today. But I know you said this is your family uh, day. Yeah, I, I like. But I, I, got, I, just, I got a good ten. I got another about ten minutes. I could do another ten minutes. No, but I just want to say I love that so much because that, that's something that we need to see with you know black fathers out here making that time mm -hmm. and dedicating that that family time to say I, I know I got a lot of things going on, places to be, things to do, but I have to make time for my family. So I just wanted to 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 say you know I can commend. Well, no, absolutely. That. Well, I appreciate that, but that's that's always number one. I, I do this for them. Everything I've done in my life to this point has been for those three boys and, and that beautiful woman back there who has blessed me with those three boys. That's my legacy. Those four people right now are the most important part. And I would stop all of this if it became too much for them. Mm. So when it's Sunday and they like, Daddy, you know, we supposed to go in the pool. We supposed to do this. I'm like, all right, I got you. Let's go. I'm mean, nothing else is gonna take that time. So I saying. always make that uh, the most important part of my day. All right. So since we got ten minutes, let's get into some quick. You know, we gotta talk some sports. There's I know you're of, gonna talk sports. Let's get it. Let's there's get it. A lot it. of things going on. Well, you know what? Before before we before I talk to you about the NBA playoffs, really quick, Julio Jones, because I, you know, you're a wide receiver. You play wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be playing for the Titans right now. Yes. Um. Do you do you think? He makes the Titans a Super Bowl contender, or do you think that maybe he should have went to another place where he had a better chance of getting a ring? I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. All right, the Titans. I mean, they got AJ Brown and Julio. That's two top receivers in the NFL, mm -hmm. right? But the last time I checked, they were in the AFC. The AFC got the Chiefs, the Steelers, the Ravens. Cam Newton is back with the Patriots. The Bills, yeah, and the sleeper, the Miami Dolphins down there, sleeper team out of the AFC East. The Titans may finish, it at best, I think would finish fourth in the AFC, which means they would have to place, they would have to face one of those top three teams on the road in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I can't see them right now beating a healthy Pat Mahomes team. You know what I'm saying? I can't see them beating a healthy Steeler team. So uh, even with Julio Jones, I think they're going to have a great season, probably do 11, 12 wins, especially being in the AFC South. There's not a lot of contenders down in the AFC South. The Texans are pff, out of there. Yeah, um, so old for that. He, he helps them get better, but I don't think they're going to get over the hump to get to a Super Bowl. Mm, okay. All right. So NBA playoffs, uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn native like myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are, are you excited about the Nets and, and what they're doing right now? Super excited. I'm, I am – Super duper excited about the Nets. Um, being a Brooklynite, growing up being a Knicks fan, um, I stopped watching the Knicks when they did Patrick Ewing dirty. Mm. When 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 they did Patrick, I was like, yo, and I was like, this is when I realized it's not even so much about the the, the team; it's about the player. I supported players, and then becoming a professional athlete myself, mm -hmm. I started to be more of a player guy. Then um, I fell in love again with the Knicks when they had my man Melo. Okay. Melo was great for New York. He's a New York guy, so I supported them. But um, it's been rough the past couple of years being a Knicks fan, as you know. I, I, being, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, I'm not a Knicks but, fan. Um, we all good, so I'm good. I don't, oh, I, don't, I don't deal with that heartache. Oh, bet. So, shoot. So, when, <laughs> when the Nets, when I found out that the Nets was getting Kyrie and KD, I was like, oh, it's going to be showtime. Yes. In New York again, it's not going to be for the orange and blue, but it's going to be showtime in New York. And at the time, yeah. we were still living in New York. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm going to be able to go to some games. Remember, Jackson's first game he ever went to was a Brooklyn Nets game. So then we move out here. And then they get James Harden. And I'm like, these dudes about to go to the finals. Like, yes. finally, I have an opportunity to be a proud Nets fan, and we moved to Atlanta. And, and the Nets about to be in the finals. I can't see anybody in the East beating them. Seriously. Well, we, I, maybe if 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 you you pray for a miracle for the Hawks 
and they can get past the Sixers, and then you can go to one of the Nets games. Look at my face. <laughs> Look at my face right now. Look at my face. I know. I, I'm just. That's why I said a miracle. The bro. Hawks. The yeah. Hawks. Come on, bro. Yeah. Look, I first of all, shout out Trey Young is probably one of the top five youngest players in the NBA yeah. right now, under 25. Like Trey Young is phenomenal, but um, he's one superstar away from being in that top tier group. Yeah. In the East, um, I feel like him being a point guard. If he were to get like a Giannis, you know, if Giannis were to go to Atlanta, or if, if you would get a, get a, a strong big that can play down there and, and put some points, grab some rebounds, Atlanta would be in that top tier. But even them, they not play playing the freaking yeah. Nets. Nice. Kyrie is one of the, the one of the most efficient scorers of all time in NBA, yeah. and he's only number two on that team because you got Kevin Durant. And you could argue I mean, he's the third James best player on, on that team. <laughs> you, you could argue that because James Harden, quiet as is kept, and I know he had his flaws in the playoffs. You know, we've seen him in a couple game sevens crumble. But James Harden is a two-time MVP, I think three-time scoring champ. Um, yeah. this, this brother can play. Yeah. He can he can play he can play the game of basketball and I've seen him for the first time this year reduce his role as a scorer to be a facilitator. Yeah. So now you now you've got a a, a six eight point guard. Yeah. A shooting guard that ha- has Mamba mentality. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, if you really need a bucket, give the ball to Kevin Durant. Yeah. Exactly. Who's going to beat them? That's what I'm saying. So it's like. The know, Warriors. I, I was saying, no, nah, not even the Warriors is, is doing that. Well, are you, are you saying the listen, Warriors you know, when, when KD was there could beat that team? Or are you saying the Warriors no, no, no. now? Listen, listen to me right now, Trip. <laughs> if Wiseman becomes who we think he can become. And you know, I'm a Warriors fan. I, I love Steph Curry. My sons love Steph Curry. Healthy, healthy Clay, Draymond, Steph playing MVP basketball, and Wiseman, that's a strong four right there, bro. It is, but I don't think he's going to develop. And I and I like Wiseman uh, coming, out of, mm-hmm. coming out of college, but I don't think he's going to develop fast enough for them to compete with, with a healthy Nets team that has that big three, plus you still got Joe Harris, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think Blake will mm-hmm. be back uh, next season just because I feel like he's played well enough to get a, a nice little contract to end off his career. Yeah, and the Nets don't have the money, but Joe Harris is is probably one of the best shooters in basketball, and they got a couple of young cats that have have really stepped up. I don't know. But here's the thing, Trip. If there's enough in Golden State, here's my thing. What is the weakness of the Nets? I mean, shoot, right now, I don't even know. I don't know about, about defense. Weaknesses. Yeah, but defense. But look how they they've been running the through. Look how they've been running through teams, though. No, because but look who they playing. Giannis has no offensive game. He's athletic. He's big, but he's not like a, he's, he's not, not a Joel not, Embiid. No, no, because he doesn't have that, you know, that that jump shot. He's not a DeAndre Ayton. You know what I'm saying? He's he's just not he he doesn't have that offensive. But why he's more of a small that. he's more of a small forward. That's that's why. But he's, he's right, just right. He is. He's, he's not a center, a bigger guy. So it's right. it's a little bit different. But yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I, as much as I like the addition of Drew Holland, and I think he makes that team a lot better mm-hmm. than they were last year. I didn't think it was enough to 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 beat the Nets. Um, I did. You know who they should have got? They should have got Chris Paul. That would, yeah. I said that last year. Why why would they not get Chris Paul? You need a leader. You need a, a floor general. Yeah. All them shooters and Chris Paul with Giannis. Look at what he did with the Suns. Yeah. Look what he did with, with OKC last year. Brought them to the playoffs and with pretty CP3 much. CP3 no underrated. Oh, no, no. He, he, he is. He, and he's one of, the, one of the greatest to do it. I want him to get a ring. But just not this year, just because they not be in the Nets. No, I don't think they. They're I don't not. think they. I don't think they would anyway. But I'm just saying, I would like for Chris oh, yes. Paul to get a ring before he retires because he's one of my favorite players. I think he's an all time great. Um, but I don't think Phoenix has has uh, has enough right now. I don't. Even, honestly, I don't think Phoenix beats the Lakers if Anthony Davis doesn't go down with an injury. So I agree. I agree. I don't think Phoenix. I don't think Phoenix is ready right now. Chris Paul could probably play another three, four seasons. Um, Devin Booker still has to develop that that Mamba mentality. You see yeah. him in the fourth quarter a little bit. He gets a little, he's a little erratic. You know, a lot too many turnovers. He needs to develop that mentality where every possession counts, and I have to, you know, I can't be loose with the ball. Same thing with Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, he's he's yeah. having a great playoffs, but you won't be able to get over the hump unless you start to put the ball in the basket and not turn the ball over in the fourth yeah. quarter the last five minutes. So And they did an extra guy anyway in, in Utah. They didn't know the score out, out, out there. They, oh, yeah, they do. They but who, who could they get? This free agent market is slim pickings. 
Yeah, um, maybe Bradley Beal. Man, I don't know if I don't know if they have the pieces to get Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal is a max contract guy. But yeah, that's they what I'm not pay can pay Bradley they, they Beal. They gave Gobert got that all that money, and I'm not saying he's not worth it because he got it. Congratulations to him, another Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, but it it'll be hard to maneuver. Yeah, maneuver these type of things. So I'm not even sure who they could bring in that would push them to that level. Um. Mm-mm. So, but I think that I mean I still think they're playing great right now. But if Donovan Mitchell, if that ankle is really bothering him, they're gonna lose this series to the Clippers, and then they're gonna have to. That ankle ain't bothering him. Let me let me tell you something about athletes nowadays, man. And that athletes love creating narratives, bro. Like like everything got to be about oh he came back from the ankle. Every time LeBron get hit, he got to throw his head back. And, and I got it's hard to watch. So I grew up watching basketball in the nineties. Oh yeah, that's, right? that's, that's a different time altogether. Jordan, remember when they 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 elbowed Jordan? He split his chin. Yeah, he got the stitches. Came back in the game. You ain't see Jordan running around talking about some. Oh, nah, that was, but that was you never seen time. Kobe do that. That was a different time. This whole different different era. Uh, once they took away hand checking and and you know this, the game is a little bit different now. You can score. That's why guys score so much like they like they see, doing now. I was gonna ask you a question, right? Because there's so much put on stats and how much stats you can accrue over a course of a career. We watched the hand check era and there was no zone. Mm -hmm. So you could hand check and you had to play man to man. So scoring was down. It was all about defense. I think a lot of these stats are inflating are are inflated versions of what they really would be. If this was the the different era and guys are like shooting up these lists and we're calling everybody a goat without having to accomplish anything. I mean, yesterday on sports talk radio, or no, it was Friday. Stephen A. Smith said that Donovan Mitchell was the greatest player in Utah jazz history. Yeah, I think it's a bit premature for that this, type of statement. <laughs> I, I, I get it because you you know you be he is a prisoner of the moment, and I think that I Donovan Mitchell. I, I guess if you look at Donovan Mitchell and what he's capable of doing, he has that potential. But you can't you can't just go skip over Stockton and Malone like that. And he's only Carmelo, been in the league three years. At three years, he's only been, and they were saying the last two playoffs. He's only been to two first round series. Yeah. He got knocked out last year after being up 3 1. And yeah, you're telling so. me he's better than Carl Malone? Carl Malone's number two all time in scoring. Stockton's number yeah. one all time in assists. Yeah. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. We, come on, guys. When I, when I saw that, I was like, all right, Stephen, that, that's, that's a bit much. And I rock with Stephen A. Smith, but that take, I'm just like, nah, you can't say somebody that's only been in the league for three years and he doesn't even have, he doesn't have an MVP. He hasn't made it past the second round in the playoffs. I don't even. He definitely he wasn't All NBA first team or second team. I don't know if he was the third team All NBA just yet either. So I like now nah, you can't you can't just jump out the window. But that's the thing about this generation is we become prisoners of the moment. And even going mm-hmm. going back a little bit uh, with the change from from the leagues being more defensive to now offensive crazy. And that's not just basketball. That's football as well. Everywhere. I think you know just from the business side of it, you know they understand that offense is is what's selling these sports. Like, Absolutely. don't nobody want to see a 65-67 game. They want to see no. 120, 110 points <laughs> and somebody scoring and shooting Duncan. Steph, you know, changed the game to a three-point league. Yeah. It's over. You know, like, that's that's what's going to fill continue to fill these seats is guys putting up these crazy astronomical numbers. Mm-hmm. So then, again, like you said, then now you have guys that may have been – all star level, but not a superstar level right. because the points are because you can average ten more right. points because you ain't got got the, the the bad boy Pistons beating you down the Celtics in the paint exactly. When you come in. Like I was saying, Kobe's last game in you know, recipes to Kobe and Gigi again. When Kobe dropped sixty in that last game against Utah, there's no way in the world somebody's gonna <laughs> drop sixty on me in that way because I, one I'm I'm triple teaming you at that point so you got to get rid right. of the ball but you you not coming to the basket because I'm just putting in I'm putting in the the last two men on the beach to foul you as hard as possible yeah. anytime you try to come to the lane I don't even understand that but that's where we at with it now well I, I watched that game in its entirety two things neither team really cared about the game it was about Kobe it was his last game they were gonna let Kobe be Kobe. So they didn't double and triple them. They played man to man because they wanted to see Kobe do things. Kobe scores some shots. He, he hit some shots in that last overtime. That was like ridiculous. Like yeah. you, there's no way you're gonna hit a, a spinning fadeaway turnaround three from 40 feet. And Kobe did it like two times in a row. Yeah, 
Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Then the game went into overtime. It was, it was, it was like, like, what are you, what, nah, what are we doing here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you were not about to leave in your last game. You know, Kobe <laughs> put up 60 on him, right? In that last game. I'm not 60. having that over on my name. I'm not having that 81. There's no way 81 wouldn't have happened. Wilt wouldn't have scored 100 on one of my teams. Them, <laughs> them numbers was not happening. I'm sorry. Like, I don't care how hard we got to foul you. You are not. Once you start getting, you creep up, I'll let you get your 30. But when you start getting to 40, if you somehow get to 50, it's on. At that point, well, you, you, you understand too that those people have that same mentality you have. Yeah. Because well, when Jordan was dropping them them fifties on the, the Pistons, I'm pretty sure they were saying he's not doing that to us. And Jordan was like, Yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> but but at least he felt he felt it though. Now you can just do it. Well, he and did. Ain't nothing gonna happen to you. He had to get if that's Jordan why I, played in this era. Oh, he probably right. averaged forty five. And, and you couldn't hand check him. He gonna do whatever he wanted to do. It's, it's, no hand check, and they play zone in this era. It's over. For, Jordan it's gonna over. get in that mid range and just. I'm cooking y'all in the mid range. Like he, he's still my my my. Well, he's not my favorite player. Allen Iverson, my favorite player. He's gonna be my goat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till the end of time. Like Jordan is just he's the goat to me. I just it'd be either him or Kareem. Kareem did a lot of. He played a lot of basketball, won a lot of championships, yeah. a lot of MVPs. Has the sport the, the scoring totals. Like he's Kareem's done it all. I think he's underrated in part because he was such a um not underrated underappreciated. Yeah. Because he had he did so much social work. You know, for uh, for Black America during that time where it was really frowned upon during the civil rights movement. So I think yes. a lot of people kind of like, eh, I don't really like Kareem. So he's underappreciated, but and al- Kareem's definitely a goat too. Also, with Kareem, Kareem kind of missed the internet, the internet era. Yeah, he was he was ending his career like when Jordan, when when those guys, when they was going at it with with Magic and Bird. Jordan changed yeah. the game and opened it up to the world, and then that's the internet started coming in crazy. Then ultimately, social media, Kareem missed the boat on all of that stuff. He so did. we don't see he him did. like we see these other guys in the light that we see them other guys in. Even like like guy like Bill Russell and, and Will, they they don't pro- get the get the recognition that they should for doing what they did. But it's a part of it is because we don't we didn't have that back then. You know, you're right because if you think about it, the Dream Team was the first Olympic basketball team that went with their professional athletes. Yep. which took basketball really international. And that was Michael Jordan in the end of Bird and Magic. Magic exactly. So Bird, Magic, Kareem, I never thought about that. That's very true. Bird, Magic, Kareem never got the international acclaim that they deserved because people didn't watch basketball overseas. Michael yeah. Jordan went with the dream team and then it, it changed, became man. an international phenomenon. That's a good point. That's really, really a good point. And that only happened because everybody else around the world had their had pro players on their Olympic yeah. teams, and it wasn't yeah. like that for the U.S. And then the, after the U.S. was like, "Hold up, now we're not yeah. going to do this." Y'all put yeah. the pros in, we got to put our pros in. And <clears throat> yeah, that was history after that. I think we we lost one Olympics. That's the one that uh, that Manu got. Um, I think it was Spain. That one. That one yeah. time. Other and we than went that, bronze. Yeah. Other than that, we we haven't lost. Uh, that was two thousand and four. Yeah, because the, the, the redeem team was two thousand and eight. Yeah. So other the than that, team was I think 2008, we've, yeah. we've lost one Olympics in basketball since the NBA started putting pro mm. players in there. So, well. but really quick before we got it, uh, so you got the Nets in the East, and then who are you taking in to come out of the West? Phoenix. Really? Mm-hmm. You think you, if if the Clippers get past Utah, you think that that Phoenix will beat them? I think Phoenix right now has they. they I think they have the good. Trio with Booker, DeAndre Ayton. Chris Paul is the X factor because he can really control the pace of the game. The Jazz likes to run. And um, they make a lot of mistakes at the end of games that you can't make those mistakes with Chris Paul on the court because he's going to capitalize on it. Um, Devin Booker can go for 30, 40 points easy. And DeAndre Ayton there is going to – he's going to give Gobert, if they come out, he's going to give Gobert problems because he's athletic, he's tall. Um, I, I think Utah is going to come out of that Clippers series. I honestly do. The Clippers will probably even it up, but I think Utah is going to win it. But awesome. then I think Phoenix is going to going to be a wrap. Listen, as long, I mean, if, if Phoenix gets to the finals, I'll be happy with that. They they ain't going to come close to winning this thing. No, but I'll still be happy. If Chris Paul made it. I, um, DeAndre Ayton, if if he was in his prime, because I think. He's gonna be really good in another two, yeah. three years. Two, three years, yeah. Yeah, but that's the only thing. That's what's gonna separate them from being ready to win a championship right now. Um, and then yeah. you know, but in two, three years though, Chris Paul ain't gonna be Chris Paul. 
At least I would. I, I think. But but time. let's be honest though. Chris Paul doesn't rely on his athleticism. He doesn't. He plays here. So two and three in two or three years, he may not have to be the Chris Paul, but yeah. he can still hit a mid range. He can still pass the ball into the post, and he can still control the pace of the game. Yeah. If you got two dogs in their prime, and you got a Chris Paul, I think Phoenix could probably win in about two or three years. It all depends on <laughs> what happens with. You know, with if, if Utah gets better, Donovan Mitchell's of course going to get better. Yeah, and if they add right. another piece there, um, Dallas, because Luca's not going anywhere. Yeah, uh, they and neither is Tim Hardaway Jr. Tim Hardaway Jr. Need to get rid of Porzingis. Yeah, but they mm-hmm. they got to do something as as well. Um, but yeah, you know, maybe they could because he could be like a Jason Kidd in Dallas the year mm-hmm. that they won. You know, mm-hmm. not not that it's not on a superstar level anymore. But and that's the one thing about the point guard position is yeah. that you can really hang around in there and still be effective later in your career. That's a good analogy. You, that's a good analogy. When you said Jason Kidd in Dallas, yeah, that was a good analogy. I could see Chris Paul being that for DeAndre Ayton and um, Devin Booker. That was a good, good analogy. I like that. Because Booker will definitely, he'll be like right in the midst of his prime. Yeah. And then you'll have yeah. Ayton coming in as a seven-footer who's a good two-way seven-footer, can mm-hmm. rebound, can play a little bit of defense, and he can score the basketball. So I think yeah. yeah they 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 could make a little they could be one of them sneak in years where you got yeah. a team that you don't expect is going to win it and they sneak in and win yeah. that they could definitely do that all right so we go we going Suns and and that's obviously Brooklyn is taking it um because I you know we can't go against the home team I just I, I just don't nope. even wouldn't even do that nope. but don't um do listen Duvall I appreciate you my brother so much and I want to congratulate you um and, and your family as well on on all the things that you guys have have been accomplishing over the past couple of years I wish you nothing but continued success my brother and I, I look forward to continuing to turn on my own demand and seeing seeing Zach up there on the screen man I appreciate that, man. Trip, I appreciate this. Uh, keep grinding, bro. I see they can't get you out in the studio because of COVID, but <laughs> yeah. you're still getting it done some way, somehow. Absolutely. Um, it don't matter what I'm doing. I, I speak things into existence. When I'm doing big, major blockbuster movies, hit me up. We're going to do this. Oh, We're yes, going to do this all the time. Trust I don't me. care what I'm doing. Season four, hit five, <laughs> six. The yeah. Next, the, if you get in Meet the Blacks 3, we're going to get you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Meet the Blacks 3. I, I got to be in it now. At, at this point, now, <laughs> so, it got to go down. <laughs> so definitely, man, I appreciate you. Um, so for you guys at, at home, um, well, obviously your info is going to be up there. But, Deval, just tell them where to hit you up at, um, if anything, if they've been under a rock for the past couple of years. <laughs> well, you can follow me at uh, I am Deval. That's I A M D E V A. Uh, I am D E V A L E. I can't even spell my own name. I am Deval on all platforms. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, the Ellis's on YouTube. You can catch me every Wednesday, 9 p.m. this summer. Sisters on BET. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, make sure you guys are following us on all our social media, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk, YouTube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. Uh, And of course, if you are not in New York City on Thursday nights, you can still watch us from anywhere in the world at RealFansRealTalk.com, 8 to 9 p.m. That's when this interview will be dropping, as well as everything else that we got going on on the channel and with the show. With that being said, for myself, Trip Young, and the good brother, Deval Ellis, thank you again. We up out of here. Peace. Peace. Type of blend backing up misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from eight to nine for the older folks. So even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. This is your African King's Come, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Get real with it, my son.
Mais j'ai tort 